Time now for your forewarned weather with Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy. All right, a very active weather day. We have a little bit of everything going on. Yes, we do for the latest in your forecast to start the week off, Alana. Happy Monday. We've had an active weather pattern. The western United States just keeping things interesting. And here in Salt Lake City at the ABC4 studios, we've got cooler temperatures with that moisture-rich environment. Look at all that cloud cover. It's also gusty. The wind's 81 degrees right now. We also It's muggy. Have you noticed that it's muggy? It feels sticky out there. High dew points with all of this excess moisture as we take a look at the wind advisories that are in place. It's gusty in Salt Lake, but not under a wind advisory. The Tooele and Rush Valley, though, are west desert, north Northwestern Utah and Box Elder County. We are expecting that to hold on until 9 p.m. We're seeing wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour, so some blowing out there over I-80, and that makes travel on I-80 a little difficult. Wind gusts, as we look at the future cast, staying strong, especially on the western side of the state as we get to 8 p.m. But then as we move closer to ABC4 News at 10 and midnight into the overnight, some winds holding on in places like Delta and Provo as storms are moving through. But overall, we get relaxing, and we are going to see that advisory expiring at nine live view from Oak City soggy soggy conditions. Yeah, they've seen moisture in Juab and Millard counties throughout the afternoon and it's still out there as we take a look at the overall setup. You know those tropical remnants are impacting us. We've got that southerly flow that monsoon flow here just bringing moisture into the beehive state and water vapor is just a great way to see it on the move. That's why we've got moisture and satellite radar, those storms popping up over the spine of Utah. So over I-15, you're watching that satellite loop in just the last few hours. And what we're watching really closely, storms approaching Washington County again. So a line of storms moving into St. George and the surrounding area. So be on alert. Also over I-15, on the western side of I-15, places like Delta and Milford staying soggy. But we're watching as the storms continue to push north. So they're not going to go away anytime soon. We're expecting nocturnal activity and as a result our flood watch for central Utah the central mountains all the way down to southwestern Utah and south central Utah has been extended now until Tuesday evening because those strong storms will bring gusty winds torrential rain and the chance of some flooding temperatures significantly below average 70s and 80s along the Wasatch Front it's 84 degrees right now in St. George so we've backed off of seasonal norms with the increase of cloud cover and moisture out there future cast this is so important when it comes to forewarning you because it's got the time of these strong storms we watch the clock in the corner of your screen by the next couple of hours, 7 p.m., we see those storms pushing into Utah County. South Central Utah, very active. What's happening in St. George in the next hour will push towards Iron County, and we're seeing it in southwestern Wyoming. Now, as we get closer to ABC4 News at 10, we do have strong storms over the Wasatch Plateau all the way down. I-15, Two-Seater City, and portions of northern Utah, including Bear Lake, Cache Valley, the Ogden Valley, looking at the potential there as well. By 11 p.m., Salt Lake County is in the mix. Utah County is active. And while we get a brief break tonight, nocturnal activity in southern Utah, it's there. You see those storms on the move, pushing north for the overnight, a little more isolated overnight, but tomorrow morning starting in spots with some heavy rain. Now, tomorrow's going to pack a punch. I-70 interchange looking pretty active right there on the state line of Nevada and Utah. Here we are by 1 p.m. Storms are starting to amp up. 4 p.m., very active over I-15. Backside of the Wasatch going to get hit. So we have strong to severe storms on deck for our Tuesday. Futurecast shows that that moisture slides east by 10 p.m. Now, what's interesting about the storms tomorrow, Storm Prediction Center putting out this risk. It's a 5% risk for the wind threat, meaning damaging winds possible. When you add that to atmospheric spin, which is actually helicity, you're going to watch the green here. It increases as we make it through the afternoon and evening hours. What that means is that these severe storms could bring some rotation. Now you have to keep in mind, Utah does average two to three tornadoes a year and the tornado threat actually elevated. It's 2% folks. It's a very, very slight chance, but we don't see this issued often and it is issued for tomorrow. So you're going to watch those cloud structures because on top of heavy rain and winds, we could see some rotation flash flood potential is going to be out there and high for tomorrow, possible or probable near the mighty five. Temperatures in the 80s and 90s. We're going to stay away from seasonal norms with widespread thunderstorms for our Tuesday. Monsoon moisture in place with that monsoon flow impacting us for the rest of the work week. Scattered storms expected in St. George drying out for the weekend. The Wasatch Front 
brings those 80s. We want to get back to the 90s, which is where we're supposed to be this time of year. We do that by the weekend as we slowly see moisture dwindling by Saturday, but scattered storms for the Wasatch Front for the next several days. Tomorrow's going to be really interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah. We'll be watching for mm -hmm. that, but still a uh, very uh, seasonable temperatures. Yeah, it's ple it's pleasant, but it's yeah. sticky. Have you been? Yes. It doesn't yes. it feel That's humid. Yes. Those are those tropical remnants. It yeah. makes that dew point go up, and yeah, it feels really humid out Not there. Not used to that around here, but no. I like it. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's right. good for the skin. Not good for my hair. <laughs> no, we can do the list. Yes, they have one of them. Thank you so much, Alana.